This is Volvo's first ever electric only model. It's the Volvo C40 Recharge. It's based pretty much on the XC40 Recharge platform, but it changes from the B pillar back. Now, at the time of filming this review, there is an update to this car with better range and better charging capabilities already on its way. So I'm gonna let you know if it's worth waiting for that. Now, before I start this review, make sure you go to productreview.com.au. Over there, you can review your very own car and you can tell other Aussie buyers exactly what it's like to own your car. So there's two flavors of this car to choose from, a single motor variant, which will cost you $74,990, but then there's this one here, which will cost you $82,490 for this all wheel drive and dual motor version. So what do you get? So you're getting this filled in grill, which shows everyone that this is an electric Volvo. You're getting these Thor Hammer LED headlamps and daytime running lights. You're getting these larger 20 inch diamond cut wheels, which I think look fantastic. You're also getting your keyless exit and entry. And then what's obvious for this car is its sloping body shape, which goes from a B pillar back all the way here to give it more of a coupe look. You're also getting some new tail lights, which actually look quite good and are very much like the ones you'll find on the upcoming flagship electric car Volvo is about to launch, the EX90. And you can't forget the extra aerodynamics in the back, like these little winglets and this giant wing at the back. You're also getting power folding rear headrests, which makes it easier to fold these seats down. You are getting less headroom than an XC40, but it's actually still not too bad because it's built for Swedes, which are tall people. Here in the back, we also have some air vents, we have rear heated seats, and we also have two USB-C ports in the back. Now here on the inside, you're getting a nine inch vertical touchscreen, which has Android Automotive installed on it, which means you have connected services for up to four years, then you have to pay after that, which includes things like a Google Play Store. You can download apps like Spotify and even Tubi to watch movies on here. So it's a very useful infotainment system. You're also getting over the air updates as well, which again is great, which means you have to visit a dealership every so often if there's a new update to your infotainment system. You're also getting a Harman Kardon speaker system in this dual motor model. You're getting a wireless phone charger down here as well as two USB-C ports up front and a 12 volt socket. You're also getting a digital driver's display up here which will show you everything like your Google Maps and your range and also your trip information but it's not very customizable. You have a micro tech and textile interior which are these seats that you see here and I have to say they're pretty comfortable and supportive and have plenty of adjustment and even have a little extension for your legs to make it more comfortable for longer trips. And what I think so cool is that this car doesn't have a button to start it. You get in, the car senses you're sitting in this seat and you can just go into drive and drive away as long as you have the keys with you. You have an inbuilt bag hook here in the glove box which can support up to two kilos which is very useful for any passengers. You also do have phone connectivity to your car so you can sync your car up to the Volvo app and remotely control the climate controls and also lock and unlock this car and see where it's located and also see the charging status. And finally, what's really cool is that you do have an inbuilt bin right here and then when you fill it up you can easily remove it out and empty it where you need to which is again very useful and to top it all off these inlays here aren't just boring piano black or any sort of fake carbon fiber instead it's this layered plastic which is backlit at night to make it look like a topographic map which is very suitable for an SUV theme and I think it looks quite cool and very unique so as for practicality you can fit a large water bottle here in the door bins which I like quite quite a lot. But here at the back, we have a power operated tailgate, which you can pop open using a button here. You can even swipe your foot underneath the car and a sensor will detect your foot and open and close the boot accordingly. There's a button on the inside and there's a button on your key. Now in the back, we have 489 liters of cargo space. And if you fold the seats down in a 60-40 split, you'll get over 1200 liters of space, which is pretty useful for a small crossover like this. Now, if you remove these two bags out of the back, you'll be able to see that the floor actually folds up and divides the cargo area very easily. And that's a very clever cargo solution. And by folding up the floor like that, you will reveal some extra space, which I use for charging cables but unfortunately there's no spare tire back here. But unlike a lot of other cars in this segment, this Volvo comes with a front trunk, which you have to manually pop like you're opening the hood of any car. And then you find the release here and it will open. And then there's a separate little lid here. You crack that open and you have a weatherproof area to put say charging cables or any small bags, which is again, very useful to find a little bit of extra space. And so while we're under here, that brings me on to warranty and servicing. So this car here has a five year unlimited kilometer 
kilometre of warranty, and then your service intervals are every 12 months or every 30,000 kilometres, whichever comes first. What is cool from a conventional manufacturer like Volvo is that your first three services are actually complementary over that three year period. And if you want to extend it to five years, that will only cost you $1,000. So the running costs on this thing are pretty low. Now, because this is a Volvo, it's time to talk about how safe it is. So this thing scored a five out of five in Australia's ANCAP safety rating system, which is a very good thing. Now, my top three favorite safety features in here include the autonomous emergency braking, both front and rear. I've actually had to use the rear autonomous feature because the camera is just a little bit too narrow in terms of its field of view. So it's been very useful and very safe and activated very quickly. Number two, I found the active lane keep assist to be very accurate and very responsive, which has been a great thing for Road tripping. Number three, this car comes with two keys. There's an orange one here and there's a black one. This orange one allows you to cap the speed of this car and also the volume of the infotainment, making it safer to drive for people who you probably would like to have some restrictions when driving your car. And this car is already capped at 180 kilometers an hour from factory as part of Volvo's mission to be a safer car company. But yes, this is a safe car, but it's also a very quick car. This thing can go zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.7 seconds. Yep, that's right, zero to 100 in 4.7 seconds. Oh, this thing is quick. <laughs> now there's no drive modes for this car. There's only an off-road mode, which you can activate and turn on and off if you have some slippery surfaces. This car is powered by two motors which are placed one at the front and one at the rear and that gives you a combined output of 300 kilowatts which is just over 400 horsepower and you have 660 newton meters to play with now that's a lot of power especially around this price point and for a car like this usually these electric suvs are a bit more numb when they're not made by a brand like tesla but here volvo have gone all out to make sure this is a fast car and it's also very nice to drive. Now I will add the 20 inch wheels are just a little bit rough riding, but I actually find it to be a pretty comfortable car for most day-to-day -day uses, but you will notice some more bumps on the road with these larger wheels. As for the suspension, this thing handles as it sort of looks. It's very sporty in its handling thanks to that low down battery placement. So you can sort of cruise through, avoid potholes very easily, and you can even stiffen up the steering via a little selection here in the center screen. Now this car, like I said, doesn't have any drive modes, but it does have a very long throw pedal. So you're not gonna be jerking forwards and backwards just to accelerate. So here at least, you can sort of cruise through and lay on the torque when you need it, but then you can just simply squeeze the throttle and get just the right amount of power you might need. But to sum it all up, this is a very easy car to drive. It's very quick, it's very relatively quiet, although there are some little noises you can hear in here because this is an electric car. It's silent, so you're gonna hear more things like the air conditioning is actually pretty loud even on its lowest setting, and there are some little high pitch words and whines that come from the front of the car. Um, I don't know if there's something that they could fix in later models with some more sound editing, but it is more noticeable because this car doesn't have a conventional internal combustion motor. And then finally, let's talk about battery efficiency. That is not the strong suit of this car. I hope the battery update does bring some improved efficiency for the 2024 model, but this 2023 model is seeing an average around 23.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and that's predominantly using a lot of city driving. Now, what I do like is how simple the user interface is in here and instead of playing around the screen here while I'm driving you do have Google Assistant available so I can say something like hey Google take me to the nearest charger So this Volvo has a 78 kilowatt hour battery. It has a claimed range of 420 kilometers. That's a WLTP range for this car. But then at 100%, I saw an indicated range of around 350 kilometers. Now, charging this car using a 150 kilowatt charger will take 40 minutes to go from 10 to 80%. But here's where things get interesting. So I drove from Sydney with 100% and arrived here in Bathurst with 33%. And instead of waiting for a single charger to be done 
or trying to search around for just one or two chargers here, I can now access this. Tesla have unlocked certain supercharger locations for non-Tesla EVs like this. So you go ahead, you pull up to the location that you know is unlocked using the Tesla app, which shows you a map of your nearest unlocked Tesla superchargers. You go ahead, plug in your car, scan the QR code, use the app, and you can either sign up for a membership, which makes things a little bit cheaper, or just pay with your credit card straight through the app, and away you go. So if you already bought one of these and are wondering if it's actually still good to keep, yeah, it's a great car. But if you're wondering if you should buy a 2023 version or wait for the 2024 version, you should wait for the 2024 version. That's gonna come with more range and a faster charging capability to mean you'll be charging for less time at those fast charges. Now, how does this stack up against its competitors? Well, I think this comes in a clear second place to the Tesla Model Y, only because the Tesla Model Y has a bit more interior space and also just has access to a wider charging infrastructure network, which this doesn't really have the luxury of accessing just yet. But thanks to access to those Tesla superchargers, it's slowly becoming a bit easier to own a car that isn't a Tesla. And compared to other European SUVs that happen to be electric, I think the C40 stands out as a more entertaining and cleverly packaged solution to those cars. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.